Hello, welcome back to a new video. Lauren Hardy, memorabilia, and Charlie Chaplin collectibles. Well, for this video, I've got more paper items that I'd like to show, and they're all original items. And uh, uh, it's much better to have the original historical paper items than uh, reproduced or copied items. It makes it all the more interesting for the collector, and also on a historical level. Um, but as going back to the last video, I spoke a lot about the history and the career. Of Dan Lino, which is this guy. This is another postcard I've got of him. So if you've not seen that video, it's, it's good to check it out because I talk a lot about Dan Lino and uh, his life and history and he, his overall career. So Stan Laurel and also Charlie Chaplin would have known Dan Lino, uh, seen him or perform, or, and uh, got very inspired by him. As you can see, the, the likeness there for uh, Stan Laurel, especially this one. This is called a midget postcard, a small square postcard of, of Dan Lena. So you can see very much the likeness there to Stan Laurel. So you can see where Stan possibly got a lot of um, inspiration from. And then uh, I have this, which is really fascinating. This is um, <coughs> the Theatre Royal. Drury Lane, so this is the 40 Thieves. So this is original old program. And uh, so this is for the uh, stage production for the 40 Thieves. And um, this is 1898, December 26. And uh, you've got a whole load of advertising on the inside. And all the names of the cast. And uh, you've all got here at the top here, you've got Dan Lino, his name just at the top there. So he played the, the lead of Arzano, Abba, Abba Dalla, if I pronounce that right. Um, so he played, uh, he played like a, a, a captain in this production. So uh, this is actually really, really nice and fascinating. Of, of the time so really lovely old almost like newspaper program and then uh, continuing on the same subject as then you know you have I have this which has come from an original old vintage magazine and uh, this is all about his life and his career that he's actually talking uh, all himself about everything so it's all really it's all by him and that also that picture there of Dan Lino is very similar to Stan Laurel uh, there's a shot of Stan Laurel in his earlier days with his hair sort of uh, parted in the center and combed either side and uh, it looks very much again like Stan Laurel so there's a whole sort of article that's obviously been taken from um, uh, original old vintage magazine but there's this photo look at the detail in that one that looks just like Stan Laurel with his hair up so again you can see massive inspiration there and also there as well so again what I'll do I'll put them on my page and uh, put them on as photos so you'll be able to see it all in more detail so the papers from this article uh, is the January 1902 so it's a nice old collection of, uh, of uh, article material there actually uh, by Dan Lino himself so it's fascinating fascinating read and then I have also this program this is another like newspaper program this is the People's Palace really really old so if I open this up in the middle, uh, what's interesting about this one, you've got program Monday, January 27th, 1902, Fred Carno's Jailbirds, which again, you can see is just there in the centre, next to an advertising for bowler hats, so fascinating, fascinating stuff, so again I will put this on as uh, as photos as well so you can see that in more detail um 
I was trying to work it out was Stan or, or Chaplin were they with Fred Carter then uh, I don't think they were as far as I know so um, 1908 Chaplin joined Fred Carter Pantanine through um, and then also Stan was the end of 1909 to 1910 I think I've got that right so um, if AJ Merritt's watching watching this then he can correct me if, if I haven't got that right but I think it's pretty correct but I have started to look more into AJ's book of, of Stan stage by stage and also the early stages of the musical with Charlie Chaplin as well which I've just read the first two chapters I've had these books for a long time now I've, I've had this uh, when it first came out this one and uh, I've never read it so I've only just got around to reading it now uh but uh, it's fascinating, fascinating read with the details and times and uh, all the corrections and, and, and what Chaplin didn't get right with his timeline. Uh, but it's a really fascinating read with this is a very accurate account of his early stage career days. And that's before Fred Carter as well. Um, <clears throat> Another really nice paper item is this. Um, this is Spanish, 1932 magazine. Uh, really nice old magazine. Um, there is a section in here on uh, Thelma Todd. Yeah, she is. Uh, the tragic actress that... Uh, died very mysteriously, whether she was murdered or accidental death or even suicide, it's always been a little bit open um, and you can look her up and uh, find out uh, all her details online but fascinating to see her in our vintage uh, Spanish magazine and then from that I have got these are Pages from Film Weekly. So this is fascinating, this one. This is the Oliver Hardy. And this is 1929. So I believe that could be from Men O' War. Looking at his outfit there and his hat that he's got on. Which is, looks like one of the uh, supporting players. One of the ladies' hats he's got on there. Uh, but it's ab it, it looks like it's advertising for uh, all to do with the coming of sound, sound film. Uh, sound by Western Electric, so it's just an unusual, fascinating bit of advertising material there from an old Film Weekly magazine, and then again Film Weekly, your Babes in Toyland, lovely, lovely artwork and advertising for when the film came out, that is 1935, uh, this one is 1933, so this is Fadi Avalo, or The Devil's Brother, another fascinating one. And then also you've got October 31st, 1931, which is Lauren Hardy and Jailbirds, which I think that is actually uh, Hard Nuts, which is the other working title. And then this one, which is a few years down the line, which is 1938. For Swiss Miss for Film Weekly. Really, really nice original um, <coughs> advertising on the uh, Lauren Hardy films from the old uh, Film Weekly magazines. And then I also have this, which is a, this is a form of a press book or campaign book or press sheet. So this is actually um like a re-release of three of their films let me just open this up really really lovely and it tells you all the details for each of their films but this is a way of advertising their films for selected cinemas or picture houses for um uh cinema posters lobby cards front of house stills to be displayed in in your lobby at the selected uh cinema um but this is actually a company, this one called Asta Pictures, was a motion picture distribution company in the United States from 1930 to 1963. Um, specialised in film re-release 
uh, form of the press book. So um, you've got three films here. You've got Movie Struck, which is uh, the other title, Pack Up Your Troubles. No, sorry, that's uh, uh, Movie Struck, Pick a Star, Pick a Star, um, which is a small uh, camera roll that they were in. Uh, and then you have Bogus Bandits, formerly The Devil's Brother, and then Heroes of the Regiment, which is Bonnie Scotland. So uh, it, it can get confusing. Three comedy features, but they change the titles. So if no one's ever seen these films before, they'd be thinking that's the title, which is not the original. Um, I have no idea why they would change the title of, of, of their films. Um it's also very common a lot on the Super 8 films, uh, which they just changed the titles, which is also very confusing. So, really, really lovely, rare, rare item. So, uh, so yeah, so there it is on that one. Um, and then I have these cards. These are like cigarette cards. So this is uh, Jean Darling. And we know she played Curly Locks in Babes in Toyland. So it's a really nice old photo of her there from the 1934 film. And uh, at first I didn't know, I wasn't sure what these were until I I looked at the names of them and uh, they looked very familiar. But you've got William Austin, who, who actually appeared in Duck Soup, 1927 in County Hospital, 1932. There's nothing on the back of that one. That's just plain. Uh, you got this one for a minute. I thought it looked a bit like Steven Seagal, the um, famous martial arts uh, American actor. It, just for a few seconds, it, with the way the hair was slipped back and the deep set eyes, but that's actually Dennis King, um, who who was in The Devil's Brother. Uh, so it's another nice old vintage cigarette card details on the back so again i will put these on in more, in more detail in, in uh, like photos and then finally you've got hollywood party uh 1934 with uh, jimmy durante and polly moran on the front of that again that was another sort of small part that lauren hardy had in a uh, feature feature film so so there it is for this video. So uh, um, I have uh, a few more bits to show in the next video and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this one and um, I hope I've not woken up the little girl which is actually asleep under the blanket. She's taken up all my space and uh, Sophie, she tucks herself in. That's a cat by the way I'm talking about. She just tucks herself in under the blanket. And um, she just has to be with me all the time, which is nice. So, there it is. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, look out for the next one soon. Bye for now.